Welcome to Divine Awakenings. I'm so glad to be here with you all today. We are going to be focusing on a super important topic, trust. So whether you are in a relationship right now with a romantic partner where you've experienced some betrayal or you've gone through it with friends or family, or it might be something that has happened in the past that is still lingering for you. When trust is broken, it is a process to get it back. And oftentimes uh, it can, if we, if we don't do the work to restore it and reestablish it, it can really impact our life in a way that um, is really detrimental to us. So I wanna talk to you today about how to rebuild trust because when we've all gone through something where our trust has been broken and when our trust is broken, it's crushing, it's devastating. And, uh, and I just want you to know though, that it doesn't have to mean the end of the relationship. It's just learning how to rebuild if both parties are wanting to continue with the relationship. So I wanted to start off by sharing a story with you of one of my clients and she had come to me, I had a, a call with her prior to working with her when she was sharing with me that she was really struggling in a really bad place. Like she, her, in her words, she was in the deep end of the pool. And what had happened for her was that she had discovered that her husband had cheated. And this was really painful because she had, this was her second marriage and her first marriage, um, she had also been cheated on. And so she was recognizing that it was a bit of a pattern. And she had gone to marriage counseling and she st it had helped, but she still wasn't in a place where she felt good or that she felt that she could be trusting again. And she deeply desired, she loved her husband, but she was so shocked and she was devastated as we all are when we're in a place where we discover something that we would prefer not to have discovered. And when trust is broken in a relationship, it causes a disconnection and it causes a loss of, um, you know, your dreams in that moment and, and how you see each other. And so the good news is, is, you know, statistics show that there is a percentage of, of people that make it, you know, they make it through this time and they are able to strengthen their relationship. And that's exactly what happened with my client. I'm going to call her Peggy. And basically, she was willing to put in the work to look at what happened. You know, when, when, when something goes awry, uh, it's real easy to blame ourselves. Uh, that's what she was doing, blaming herself, you know, the, all those thoughts about, wow, what did I do wrong? And if I'd only done this differently, or if I'd not been so gullible, maybe I would have seen this coming. And we put ourselves through a lot of grief. And so that's what, what Peggy was doing as well. And as we worked together, we went through some processes uh, that really helped her to realign and to rebuild her relationship not only with her husband, but with herself. And they were stronger than ever. And I'll, I'll never forget the day. It was actually on my birthday. It was one of the best birthday gifts I've ever gotten. She had sent me a, a letter with a picture of her and her husband. They were on a second honeymoon cruise and they looked ecstatic together. And she, you know, this is, this was a really happy ending for Peggy. Uh, it's, it's doesn't, always happen that way. It can most definitely happen that way. But sometimes you might be in a place right now in this group where the betrayal happened a year ago or two years ago and maybe you're separated or you're divorced or maybe it's something that happened years ago and you still are struggling to, to develop a trust again. And that's really common. You're not alone. Most of the women that I work with and talk to have the same issue. So let's unpack what happened for Peggy and how she was able to rebuild trust and the steps that we took to help her do that. 
The first is that um, it's really, really important to forgive. And that can be challenging for a lot of people. But the truth is that in, until you're able to forgive, you've got a wall up. And in order to really have that wonderful connection that you want with a partner or with a friend or, or with anyone in your life where the trust has been broken, that wall has to come down. You know, it has to crumble. And you uh, need to be in a place where you're open and you're willing to step forward because if you hold on to resentment, that creates a block between you and the other person and you'll never have a chance to rebuild uh, or to reconnect. So first we start with forgiving ourselves, right? As I said, you know, we can come up with when we find out devastating news or shocking news, we try to figure it out. You know, um, we look for explanations or we're blaming ourselves, as I said, or we are finding a flaw and we, we want to fix it because our mind goes to, well, how can I fix this problem? You know, if I can fix it, then I can maybe keep it from happening again. I can prevent it. And so where we want to start with uh, forgiveness for ourselves is self, self-compassion, right? Really um, allowing ourselves to um, stop blaming ourselves, to, to be kind to ourselves, and also to learn how to have more uh, self-worth, right? Because even, you know, we all have flaws, we all have vulnerabilities, but it doesn't mean that we are not worthy or that we are not valuable and deserve to be treated well. Every single one of us does. So it's important to know that the behavior of the other person, um, his or her behavior, it was their choice. And that reflects who they are. It's, it's not about who you are. So the second step is about forgiving the other person. You know, it's really impossible to regain trust without first regaining control of your emotional well-being, which is what you do in, in the self-forgiveness and being able to find your own inner peace um, with that situation. And many, many people struggle with this because they, they, they feel like, oh, if I forgive, then I'm letting the person off the hook, thinking that the forgiveness is all about the other person. And that's not what forgiveness is about at all. Forgiveness is about you releasing that emotional ta- attachment to the situation. And, you know, I think it was Lewis Smead said forgiveness is um, uh, letting that prisoner, letting that pr- prisoner free and realizing that that prisoner was me. Yeah, we keep ourselves in a prison when we are, stay so emotionally attached to something. So when we are able to forgive the other person, it sets us free emotionally. And one way that we move towards this is by taking our focus off of what happened, taking our focus off of the actual event, and instead, you know, really doing the healing work, right? Really um, doing the deeper work around that, you know, that particular situation. Because most of the time in my experience, I've been, I've been um, healing and coaching, um, spiritually healing people for over a decade now. And what my, um, what I know for sure is that we set up dynamics with people until we really learn and heal. So if we're in a situation where we've been betrayed, which all of us do go through at some point in our life, um, but if you're in one with a partner, it's generally because you've been betrayed in the past as well. And so we, we, it's just a dynamic of what's already been going on in your life. And so the, the key is to go back and heal where it originally started and um and and then that will affect all of your relationships it will shift things for you and it will change the perspective that you have uh, of the other person and speaking of perspective it's really really important that you are able to see the other person's perspective and that can help you understand what happened and why it occurred and to make it less personal It can also be easier to forgive someone when you really see them as a whole person. I remember that happened to me one time. I was really, really upset uh, with another person in my life. And I'd gone to church and I had really asked for God's help in taking this huge burden off of my heart that felt like it was crushing me. 
and I was given a vision of that person in their purest form uh, when they were younger, uh, as I remembered them, and she was almost haloed, you know, and, and her beautiful spirit was shining, and it instantly reminded me of the truth of who she was and is, and that, you know, the situation that had occurred was not really her. That was a part of her um, personality that she had given more focus to and allowed it to, to kind of run the show, but that wasn't really who she was at the core of her being. And so if you find yourself really getting upset and stewing and being angry over a situation, try to pull back and remember the good qualities that you know that other person has and recognize that we all have flaws. We all make mistakes. Doesn't mean that uh, for you to forgive the other person that you need to stay in contact with them if you choose not to. That's absolutely your prerogative doesn't mean that you ever have to let that person back into your life. The power of forgiveness is that you release yourself from that situation, from the emotional tie, and from all of those toxic feelings that can run rampant if we do not heal them. And so that that's robbing you of your joy. And why are you letting somebody else rob you of your joy? You have more power than that. You can make the choice. And so those are the first two steps. Uh, trust, uh, forgiving yourself and forgiving the other person. The third is to trust yourself. And you know, it's nearly impossible to trust somebody else unless you trust yourself first. And a, really a lot of the fear that people feel when they think about trusting someone again who has betrayed them is that it's gonna happen again. And they really have the fear that they are not going to be able to withstand it. You know, if this happens again to me, oh my gosh, I will not be able to handle it. And so that fear is driving the bus, so to speak. And they're really worried about going through devastation again, loss again, shame again, humiliation, whatever feelings that they experienced with that situation or feeling tricked again or duped again. And, and that that would really, really put, um, take its toll, I would say, on their confidence and their self-esteem and their, and their joy. So that fear can be so great that they want to avoid it at all costs. And this is where, you know, we really need to, to do the work because instead of, as I said, focusing on why you won't be okay if something happens again, when you do that inner, inner work and you really trust yourself, you know that you are going to be okay no matter what happens. You're gonna be fine and you're gonna be able to still live a good life without that other person. I wanna give you this tool here that you can put things into perspective and really stop yourself from going down that rabbit hole. And this tool is that, uh, you know, when you look back at your life, you know, like most people, you've had some great wins, you know, you've, you've had wonderful experiences, you've gotten through some difficult challenges and so, I want you to think about those things, or even when you get off from this training, to make a list of them, strengths that really got you through those tough times. And so if you're finding it difficult to trust yourself again, to take a look at that list and really remember you know, that you have that strength, that you are empowered. And if you're still struggling with that, and don't feel poorly if you are, because most of, you know, many, many, many of us do, if you're really finding it difficult to trust yourself, then you know understand that it's challenging to do this on your own. And you'll wanna consider working with somebody that can help you move through those times so that you can get back to a feeling of wholeness. And when you're, and I really would recommend that you choose somebody that is not a friend. A lot of people will say, well, you know, I talk to my friends. The bottom line is, is they are not uh, somebody who is a professional who can really see beyond your blind spots to help you heal. And that's what we wanna do. We don't wanna just keep perpetuating the situation over and over again. And that is what can happen. So the next step is to trust the other person, right? That's what we're working towards as well. And so the truth about trusting somebody else is that the only certainty around that is that there is no certainty. Yeah, I know that's a hard one to swallow. And after a betrayal, all you can do 
is truly is assess the situation and you know really determine what you what you would love really look at it and it, as I said in the beginning there is great possibility that you can heal your relationship once there's been a betrayal and it's it's possible when both parties are willing to come together and they want to move forward together and it requires that you open to trust again so you want to look at really looking at yourself and then looking at the behavior that's gone on in the relationship up until now um, has it happened before has he or she broken your trust in similar ways in the past you know look at the big picture and assess is there more good than bad in this relationship you know there are never any guarantees when it comes to other people only you know really time tells and trust is something that is not renewed immediately it takes time it takes time you know we have to we have to earn each other's trust uh, once it's been broken and uh, and so that's that's really important and so you want to know that it's also very well worth it because relationships are vital to our well-being and really vital to our quality of life and and without the difficult times we wouldn't be able to appreciate the good times and to grow from them know that when your relationship's been ruptured that it offers you that opportunity to grow as a person and really perhaps find a deeper meaning uh, in the relationship itself so i want to end with a bible verse on trust which is trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight so you don't have to do it on your own right and uh, the good news is that putting your trust in god is the way forward set aside your anxieties set aside your doubts and turn it all over to the lord and as we are turning it over to the lord we are taking these steps that i listed earlier forgiving yourself forgiving the other person trusting yourself and developing that trust again with the other person and if you are knowing that this is really challenging for you to do dm me um, i would love to have a conversation with you and see how i can best support you in moving forward in rebuilding uh, your relationship with yourself and um, and really feeling that wholeness again so thank you so much for being with me today it is such a pleasure and an honor and a privilege to be sharing with you tips and tools and strategies to help you move forward so that you can have a more joy-filled life. Lots of love to you. Bye for now.